Welcome to the Feeling Lighter podcast, where we are shedding old beliefs one episode at a time, because the bottom line is how we feel about ourselves changes everything, doesn't it, Lisa? Absolutely. And so, yeah, again, I always want to reiterate, we're bringing guests on that help us shed old beliefs because Mm -hmm. some beliefs that we have serve us and some don't. So we're going to open some doors and get curious and see if there's any belief that we currently have that is really not helping us anymore. And if we can shed that belief and feel a little lighter, Mm -hmm. then the Feeling Lighter podcast will have uh, succeeded in its mission. Absolutely. Done, done. Yes. <laughs> um, so um, I'm going to introduce our next guest. We're going to have a debunking episode. I love this. So here we go. Uh, Jen Trebek ha- has been described as a force of nature in the wellness space, recognized as one of Podcast Magazine's 40 Under 40, and nominated for the 22. I'm sorry and nominated for the 2022 International Women's Podcast Award for Visionary Leadership. She is an optimal health coach, podcaster, and business consultant. After graduating from the University of Michigan Ross School of Business, Jen founded Better Life Now LLC while working full-time in hedge funds. After over a decade of coaching clients, Jen started Salad with a Side of Fries podcast to help it pay to help pay it forward and reach a larger audience to teach the nutrition education we all were supposed to know but no one ever taught us jen implements revenue generating wellness programs in doctors offices salons and spas to further expand impact and help change the state of healthcare as a certified transitions lifestyle coach and consultants with nutra matrix custom health solutions jen is typically working out at physique 57 discovering hidden gem restaurants in NYC, or traveling to spend time with friends and family. Welcome, Jen. Thank you for having me. Lisa, I saw your connection to University of Michigan. I'm from Michigan, so. We've had a lot of connections recently. Are you from Michigan? I am. I grew up in the suburbs of Detroit. Ah, okay. I grew up in Detroit proper. See, look at that. There you go. Wow. We have just, yeah, this is, love that. Well, Welcome, Jen. I'd love to hear, before we get down to our debunking episode, um, I know you're working with a lot of clients and sort of, like you said in your bio, redefining some of these things in, in the nutrition and wellness space. So what is your goal when you're working with a client who comes to you? Like a client will come to you with this problem and you're like, let me help you through this methodology. Maybe give us a little insight into that before we begin. Yeah, for sure. So typically what brings people in my virtual door is weight management. Um, A lot of times we're dealing with sleep and stress and food sensitivities and a whole lot of things, but it's the weight piece that tends to bring people in the door. Mm -hmm. And I work with clients in 12 weeks to, as I said, sort of reteach or maybe learn for the first time actually how foods are processed in the body and what the body actually does with food to then understand how we want to make nutritional choices. Mm. And then from there, we get into all of the stuff that makes this not quite so easy. Mm -hmm. So sleep and events and travel and stress and changing our behaviors and all of the things that we have done and Ultimately, my objective is to help people become what I call unconsciously competent, Mm, where our default is healthful, nutritious choices with indulgences that just happen to come when it works in the moment for celebrations in life, but those aren't these, you know, giant things that I think sometimes we've made them into in our Mm. lives. And really, the weight management piece, I'm, I focus on removing fat, not just losing weight. But all of that is the side effect. Mm. Yeah, It's really about this transformation in not just our bodies, but our minds and our energy and all of these things. And then the body will release the fat that it's been holding on to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, we've talked about this on the podcast a lot, and I think I've shared with with you before, Jen, because we've talked outside of this podcast, sort of like 
how Tyler yeah. and I used to run a body transformation company and how yeah. many of thousands of those clients came in for weight loss. We gave them exactly what they wanted, but they were still miserable. And so shifting the intention and focus like away from that, you know, like whether that happens or not will not actually determine our value and worth and meaning in this life. And right. I have watched a lot of people find extreme liberation, decreased stress, um, self value, self love, and the weight wasn't even, I mean, it wasn't even, didn't even really come up. Right. So it's, it's fascinating to see how we often think it's about the weight and really what, what we have found it to really be about is, discovering self-value, discovering self-worth, discovering um, how we had been adhering to standards and beliefs put on us by society that no longer serve us and that we can have yeah. complete liberation in the body we have today mm -hmm. with or without that release and, totally. and transformation. And mm -hmm. so it's fascinating to watch people, um, like it's funny, I, I like I said, we watched thousands of people go through this and they just were not happy. Mm -hmm. And I've watched people right. come into We Shape today, their body didn't actually change at all. Right. And they um, feel incredible. Yeah. Happier, and energetic. Healthier. Sleep sleeping better. better. Yeah. yeah. All, all of it. Things. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So exactly. um, I'd love to get into some debunking. Are you guys ready for this? Are we ready? Yeah. Okay. I want to do the first one. Okay, you my go. My favorite. Love it. <laughs> can you please, can you please debunk the BMI? Because I hate the BMI. Oh, please. I have Thank a whole you. presentation where I started with BMI is trash. <laughs> right. So I say BMI is BS. I wrote a TED Talk, BMI is BS. Yes. And then the pandemic happened, so I never gave the TED Talk. Um, oh, dang. But so, so BMI is a number value based on height and weight. Mm -hmm. And if your health professional is really savvy, or if you go to a very high tech website, it will maybe include your age, <laughs> right? Perhaps. I know, catch that, right? And gender, maybe. <laughs> right, and gender. <laughs> From there, they give you this number that is a score about the size of your body. Well, let's just start. I have so many thoughts running through my head. Let's just start with the number on the scale that's the primary driver of that BMI. Mm -hmm. Well, that number includes your organs and your brain and your bones and muscle and water and blood and all the other things in your body, not just fat. Mm-hmm. Which is important, by the way. We need yes. that. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> we do. We do. <laughs> we do. The objective is not 0% body fat right. at all. <laughs> um, but there are also zero diseases that exist only in bigger bodies. Absolutely. So what BMI is telling us is not truly an indicator of health. Exactly. Now we could talk about what we want to look at instead, but I went digging because I was like, how my brain works is that I have to know why. Mm -hmm. So I went digging of like, where did this come from? Oh yeah. Where this did, fun. why, right? <laughs> why did we even start using BMI? So it came about in the 1830s to 1850s and the guy who created it was looking at populations over time mm -hmm. to compare mass population here to mass population there. Yeah. So it was designed as a way to say, okay, all the people living in North America compared to all the people living in Asia, we can look and compare that way. It was never designed for individual analysis. Mm. Absolutely. And he was a mathematician. This wasn't even like right. a scientific thing. <laughs> right. So. so then our healthcare system didn't know or didn't want to know how to help our healthcare providers have conversations about weight with their patients. And so they adopted BMI to make it easier for our physicians to talk about weight. Hmm. Mind you, rather than an education on nutrition. <laughs> well, yeah, that would have been different. But, yeah. <laughs> but right. also, too, it was adopted 
under the insurance premium like context to create hierarchy where people with higher BMIs could be charged higher premiums. And that came along. That's kind of where we get into the weight stigma, fat phobia in the healthcare system that we live in today. But, but yeah, I'm with you. The BMI is so trash. It doesn't help anybody. Um, it's very arbitrary. It, it changed overnight. I don't know if y'all remember, was it in the 2000s, oh, yeah. late nineties where it changed? Like there was a group for normal weight, overweight, obese, and then everyone went to sleep and the next morning they had switched the scale. So, so now you might've went to bed normal weight, but you woke up overweight. So it's, it's, it's so unhelpful in like real health care and real I mean, wellness. Anytime and something is overly simplistic like that, yeah. we have to pause because we had uh, Patrilli on who actually that by the time this airs, that's already that aired today. Yeah. And, and my favorite thing about that episode was that she said like kind of this oversimplification of how we're measuring someone's health is just complete bullshit. Yeah. And she yes. actually highlighted six, I believe it was, don't quote me on this number, like 14 to 16 different health behaviors mm -hmm. that contribute to health. Right. And so two of those, one is diet, one is exercise. But, but they like were like, it, it was like in, in an overall percentage of impact, it was something like less than 5%. Right. So we live in this culture that is fat phobic, that is focusing on diet and exercise only and a number on the scale and a BMI to determine if someone will have health problems. Right. And it's like not right. even scientifically sound methodology. No, it's not. No. And then to your point, the challenge of what comes after that is that we're pushing because that's the framework. And I see it all the time. Every time a client comes to me, um, well, my doctor said mm -hmm. my BMI has to be. Right. Or the number on the scale has to be. Right. And that pushes people into some, probably some of the other things that we're going to debunk. Right. But a right. lot of the diets and things out there that push the number on the scale down, but don't necessarily improve health. Absolutely. Because what happens when we do a lot of these diets, right, in air quotes, the number on the scale goes down, but what we're losing is water, muscle, and bone, mm -hmm. which is counterproductive to health. Absolutely. It's crazy. Yeah. So if it, it basically. <laughs> BMI's trash. Yeah. <laughs> trash. Let's go back to Dr. Bolden's uh, uh, presentation. <laughs> BMI is trash. Um Okay, I, we, I feel like we could just probably move on to the next one, yes. right? Yes. <laughs> um, this calories in, calories Ugh. out. Ugh. I, I know. hate this one. Just let me eat my damn whatever. <laughs> Sleeve of Oreo. Yeah. <laughs> right? We just had um, uh, the woman who run Dr. Jess, who, who runs the Unbiased Science Pod. Do you, are you mm -hmm. familiar with her? She just came on and we just got to debunk a bunch of other stuff too. So yes. I, I love this one. Um, but yeah, talk with us about calories in, calories out and the BS behind that. Okay. <laughs> you don't need my education or Dr. Lisa's or Katie's to know that there's a difference in the 150 calories of a Twix <laughs> and 150 calories of cucumbers. Mm -hmm. Full stop. Mm -hmm. Like, you don't need to know any more than that, <laughs> right? Yeah. And it doesn't take a degree to know that the body is going to respond differently to eating. And I only use this number because this is what all the influencers and wildness on social media is talking about, but 1,200 calories a day. Mm. Like that's not for even toddlers. A, toddlers, yeah, at least. That's yeah. like such disordered like, eating. That's so, so sad bad. that we believe that we have to do that. But I know I used to think that way. Me too. Yeah. yeah. But uh, same. And it goes back to all that stuff we've been taught of calories in, calories out, eat less, move more. Right. But eat that's less. just not how the <laughs> body works. Nope. Yeah. And we know that. Because if we ate 1,200 calories a day of Twix or 1,200 calories a day of cucumbers, P.S. don't recommend either one. Not the point. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> <laughs> right? Don't recommend either of those. But we know that there's a dramatic difference. And yeah, the and difference. Just the yeah, go ahead. No, you go ahead. Sorry to mm -hmm. interrupt. No, I was going to say, I'm like, the difference is nutrition. Right. Yeah. So what we're really looking for are nutrients. Mm -hmm. And mind you, if you focus on nutrition 
the calories will take care of themselves and you don't have to count and you don't have to obsess and that doesn't actually matter. Right. You know, I, I will say all things being equal, sure, a calorie deficit creates movement in the downward direction on the scale. But when we're looking at health, it's about how we are fueling ourselves and what's going in, not what's staying out exactly. that's going to determine our health. Absolutely. And like, I also think about that, like whole eat less, move more. I'm like, if I'm moving more, I'm hungry. I'm hungrier. I need more. <laughs> I, I'm eating more than I normally do All because right. I'm moving because more. Because I'm moving more. And really what happens is our metabolism fights back against us yes. when we start limiting our foods and eating less and moving more. Our bodies believe like what's happening? What's going on? <laughs> like, yeah. why don't I have what I need? And it will retain weight in many cases to try to sort of fight back. And it will lower our energy reserves for, you know, the purpose of keeping us alive. Because our body's goal is to maintain some homeostasis so that we live and not die. <laughs> and when it thinks there's a famine coming <laughs> because exactly. all of a sudden oh, I'm eating so much less <laughs> and then it's, it just becomes problematic. So, Well, the body trying to protect itself yeah. holds on to everything. Absolutely. It says, wait a minute, you're not going to kill me. Mm -hmm. I will survive. And how mm -hmm. I will survive is everything and anything you give me, I'm going to store as fat. Because mm -hmm. fat is fuel stored to be used later. Fat Absolutely. is survival. Yep. Yeah. Which is why we say we actually need <laughs> We fat. actually need a little fat. Yes. Like 90s heroin <laughs> chic, goodbye. We don't, we don't want you. Um, I know. But the sad part is, with everything that's in the modern, contemporary, like the current conversation around medication for weight loss and all of these kinds of things, we're back to that mm -hmm. being the standard and the expectation. Yeah, we are. And it's really scary because one of my pet peeves, I started talking about these meds a couple years ago, and one of my pet peeves was that a lot of these celebrities were denying using them mm -hmm. and then saying, I'm just, I'm walking and doing Pilates and, right. you know, eating really well. And like, how detrimental to the average person mm -hmm. is that? Because then the average person says, I'm walking, I'm doing Pilates, I feel like I'm eating really well, but I'm not getting that result, so what's wrong with me? Yep. And I want everybody to know there is nothing wrong with you. You are fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you are Absolutely. 100%, right? There's nothing wrong with you. And it's all of those other things failing you, not you. Yeah. And what's in one of my favorite things to do is to be in this work mm -hmm. and then to watch celebrities and the talk yes. and the things and to watch myself from the outside in and go, oh, I used to go down that path. And now I go, oh, no, like. I'm so sorry that I see that you think your worth and value is uh, directly correlated mm -hmm. to the size of your body. And even further, that you think that your health your is. Your health. That's really what it yes. is. Yes. Yeah. We it's, believe it's, a smaller body is a healthier body. And, and it's like, not. we're actually <laughs> finding a lot of research that has debunked a lot of things mm -hmm. around body fat percentage and different things in terms of its correlation to health. So it's, it's just, just so slow to catch up, right? Yeah. Like, right. We. Those of us who are in this space and looking at that research, we know it. Yeah. We see it. Yeah. But it's not making its way into the mainstream. Like going no. back to what you were saying about, you know, things seeming so simplistic. Like I did an episode about, um, I called it my top five tips for digesting nutrition news. Mm -hmm. Because this is all part of it. The headlines are not mm -hmm, going right. to capture this. No, yeah. never. <laughs> it doesn't make for really compelling, clickable things. Yeah. And so it's over time, I think we'll get there. I think we've made so much progress, mm -hmm. you know, already, but it, it has to get into the discourse and what everybody and how everybody talks about this. Yeah. You know, I always say it's not what to eat, it's how to eat. And mm -hmm. it's all of these pieces are involved in that too and how we talk about it and how we think about it. Mm -hmm. And so it's why how we're we doing think this. about it is, I mean, we talked about this on another episode we recorded today with just around the mental stress of the, I'm worrying about how many this and what, what about the nutrients here? It's like 
oh my God, like the yeah. mental stress. And I, I can attest to this because I would say I definitely had disordered eating around in the past around like everything had to have a nutritional value. Everything had to have this, everything had to have that. And I was like so particular about every single thing that I had in my going in my body. But I was actually really stressed by that. Mm -hmm. And I actually yep. feel healthier now than I ever have felt in my life. That's awesome. And I eat things that I would have demonized before. Right. A hundred percent. It was more actually about the permission to not have judgment and shame and criticism. And it was just yep. like, oh, what does my body feel like today? Oh, not to use your <laughs> example. It feels like a nice salad with some French fries. <laughs> right. Right. Like, <laughs> yes, it, it feels like it actually feels like having both. It's uh -huh. not about choosing one or the Either other. Or, yeah. It's not about like, oh, well, you can have that, but you can only have one. Mm -hmm. It's like. Just have what you feel like having. And like literally the stress of all of this chaos around the messages and everything, like, it, 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 that is carrying so much energy and stress that it's affecting your health in a negative way. Just eat the dang box of cookies if you want it. I'm just like <laughs> well, so and, done. <laughs> and part of that is just everything that we've been told because we've spent our lives paying attention to rules yes. instead yes. of our bodies. Yeah, that's true. Yep. So part of this process is relearning the language of the body. Yes. yes for right? Sure. And yes. that communication. Because our body speaks to us in ways that aren't words. Yes. Very and true. that's real hard for a lot of us when we've learned to ignore that because we were told to eat less, move more, calories in, calories out, right? And we like, la, 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 I can't hear you because <laughs> I was told to eat less, right? And that actually, over time can create a physiological situation in the body where we don't properly respond to the hormones, yep. leptin Definitely. and ghrelin, that tell us when we're satisfied or we're hungry. We can rehab, right? We mm -hmm. can learn how to pay attention to our body. We can do all these things. But again, like, of course we ended up here because we ignored yeah. all this stuff for so long. And like, so do, do, isn't it really funny that we actually think that our 8 billion people were designed to have achieve one body type it is amazing right. that we think that <laughs> it's amazing because we don't think everyone should be the same height that changes that changes over time <laughs> right sorry <laughs> no but seriously yeah, yeah but the height thing yeah. is a good example we don't too. think everyone's supposed to have the same size shoe yeah but we think everyone should be seeking the same size body like and then literally. we try to bend and twist and manipulate quote unquote science mm -hmm. to, to do it to do it and mm -hmm. then then we sell a lot of products <laughs> Because I did a sell money. a lot of products in the past when I had that other company. I did. Yeah. And and that is the thing. It's like we have to remember that there is in there's actual like money to be made in this industry for us going down that path. Mm -hmm. And um I have shared this story before and I'll continue to share it that when we shut down that other company and started We Shape, I had a number of people in my space who were potential investors and in various things say, Oh, you're not selling weight loss, you're not selling diets, you're not selling this. Oh, that's not very sexy and we don't really know how we can invest because we don't know that we can feel right. confident in you being able to market your product. And mm. I was like, <gasps> But it's the we right thing to do do okay thanks like i just was like okay you know but it's fascinating it's like we we it's forget wild. about that those dollar signs yeah right and as everything. the consumer right part of all of these things whether it's a headline or the latest diet like who's behind that right mm -hmm. right who's either paying for that coverage or profiting from this conversation mm -hmm. yeah yeah Hmm. This is a good one. Okay, I think we probably have time for one more debunk. Yeah, one more. Um, let's do, uh, Lisa, what do you want to do? You want to do food pyramid or packaging and labeling? I was thinking food. Ooh, I don't know. I was thinking food pyramid. Okay. The old All right. food pyramid. Okay. So <laughs> this actually goes to what we were saying before of the money. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that food pyramid was based on economics. Right not nutrition, That's so right? Crazy. <laughs> it was based on getting us to eat what we grow in this country. Hmm. Well, ah. what do we grow? Corn, yeah. wheat, now soy, <laughs> but yeah, right? Perfect. But corn and wheat. So that's why it was the biggest thing on the bottom of that pyramid. 
get everybody to eat while we're growing. <laughs> the average American eats more grain than an Olympic athlete is recommended to eat on race day. Interesting. Oh, wow. <laughs> We've been taught that this is a staple of nutrition. Mm -hmm. It's not, right? Our macronutrients are protein, carbohydrates, quality fat. The carbohydrates that we want are fiber. And as we look at grains and corn, they are incredibly inefficient at getting us the protein and the fiber. Mm. Right? It takes a volume of the grain to get us even an ounce of fiber. Gotcha. Or sorry, an ounce of protein or a couple grams of fiber. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? But if we were to eat an egg, one egg, an ounce of protein, right? So it's just inefficient. You want to eat a cup of uh, raspberries, you get nine grams of fiber. Wow. Wow. So the grain piece is just the economics of the time mm -hmm. to have us eating what we grow in this country, not about nutrition. And by that token, it also extends into percent daily value, which is a little bit of you know the nutrition labels thing. Yeah. But percent daily value was also created in a time of war. And it was the minimum requirement for our military to not deteriorate into rickets and scurvy. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's not about health. It's yeah. not about vitality. It's not about having all the systems functioning on, on, you know, system go to support all the other functions. It was like, here's the minimum for us to not become ill. <laughs> oh, interesting. So we can throw out the food pyramid. We can ignore the right. labels. <laughs> Tune back into our bodies. That's the other thing is like to make big generalizations right. like the food pyramid and say that like everybody needs exactly it, this. this. Yeah, right. silly. It, it's it's really silly, which is why I love the intuitive eating journey. Mm -hmm. I love the idea of having like kind of like that one episode we did where we talked about all of the health behaviors like right. we just said that and the diet and exercise is actually falling under the five percent category of the actual overall impact and emphasizing like uh, like my old self would look at myself today and be like oh my god and my <laughs> new self today is like I actually have more energy i actually sleep better i uh, you know it's like actually yeah. feel better than i've ever felt and it has nothing to do with following any of those rules any of those rules yeah. right so i do think there's a progression because a lot of yeah. people right it's it is so hard to go from all of the rules right to whatever my body tells me because right, I'm pretty yeah. sure that's Skittles 24 seven, right? Yeah. Like, first of but all, that's it's not, fear. but I get exactly. that feeling, yeah. exactly. <laughs> right. So uh, to me, there's a progression. Mm -hmm. And then, right, we work with some guidelines to shift that nutrition that then allows us to understand what our body is telling us and when it's communicating and how it's communicating right. for us to then take the next step into figuring out from those guidelines what's actually our best day mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. and to also give ourselves like i know i sometimes you know on my intuitive eating journey i have like eaten the whole thing or like the whole box yep. of this and, the, and then and then i think a really important piece of that was oh interesting i am having a terrible stomach ache right now <laughs> right um, thank you for that message yep not i can't believe you did that you broke that rule you're so unhealthy it's like also that's why we do so much of the mentality piece that we shape because I feel like it's so much that contributes to our overall health. The way we think yeah. impacts how we feel and how we feel impacts how our, our health is. Exactly. And yeah. so it's yep. also just the pro going through that process and having some trust. I know it's a lot. It's very difficult to ask someone to, right. to break up with food rules and to and to you know trust that things are going to be okay um but i think under the under the care of a skilled practitioner you know go, going on an intuitive eating journey can be a wonderful experience Absolutely. and i do think like what you're saying jen is this idea of listening to our bodies is is foreign we we have been told yeah. to follow rules um human beings are not robots <laughs> yeah we're 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 more than just 
calories in, calories out. We're unique, dynamic human beings with feelings and energy. And it's it's so much more than that. So and by more. that token, too, I just want to add, emotional eating is not the end of the world either. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And find me a culture in this world that doesn't come together right. for in some reason, you know, mm-hmm. in some way, for some reason, around food. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So the idea that all of a sudden we're going to completely separate those things is not only inappropriate, it's unnecessary. Mm-hmm. And it could it's actually okay. harm our health to have mm-hmm. that way of thinking. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. the fourth debunk. Emotional eating is not bad. Like yeah. We like to think. And food right. does hold emotion. Absolutely. I make my grandmother's macaroni because it tastes good, but also because it makes me think about her. And mm. I right. associate that with a positive feeling. It is, it is a comfort food. Now, I don't get all of my comfort from food, but sometimes I do get comfort from food. And there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Right. Well, before we let you go, Jen, we we have to ask the big Feeling Lighter podcast question, which is, what is a belief that you once had that you no longer have that has impacted your life in a big way? So there are so many. (laughs) Right. (laughs) I'm like, oh, my God, where do I start? But I think... This one keeps coming up a lot lately, and that is that everybody else has it figured out. Oh. Mm. Oh Everybody is making it up all (laughs) the time. Yeah. All the time. Yeah. Like, even at work, you might have a boss, right? And it seems like they know everything. Well, no, they might know some things that you don't know, but they're still just making it up every day. I am making it up here, mm-hmm. by the way. Seriously. <laughs> yes. <laughs> People are like, oh, no, we can't trust her anymore. <laughs> but it's true. We you really are. are just figuring it out. That is a We're great. We're all just figuring it out. One. Nobody has it figured out. Yes. Nope. No one's excused from that life experience. Yeah. Love it. Well, Jen, where can everyone find you? Yes. Um, wherever you're listening now, Salad with a Side of Fries podcast, all social media. I am Jen Trepic, J E N N T R E P E C K. And my website, a salad with a side of fries dot com. I have a download for you there. It's uh it's not what to eat, it's how to eat. So you can go Love grab it. that for free. Love awesome. that. Well, thank you everyone for listening. Thank you, Jen, and we'll see everyone next week. Thanks.